Hello everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my Cyber Garage, where I tinker around with just about everything. For today's project, we're going to discuss some tips for configuring SQL Server Management Studio. So what is SSMS? Well, it's Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. You can see the acronym comes from there. If you, in Windows 10 or higher, click the Windows button and then the SQL Server icon that comes up, that will bring up the IDE, the Integrated Development Environment. Looks like this. And I'm assuming that you're already using it and just giving you some configuration tips to get better use out of it. We're going to spend a bunch of time with the tools options right up here, the blinking green box, and a bunch of settings that you can do. So let's get to it. The first configuration tip we're going to look at is when you establish a connection, setting a red color for the prod environment. It's really dangerous if you're jumping around in SQL Server Management Studio, looking at test, looking at stage, looking at your pre-prod, looking at development, and all of a sudden you go to prod to run a select. You don't want to accidentally run a select that has a cross join and impacts prod and slows everything down, or worse, run an update query in the wrong environment. So this trick is to put a big red bar at the bottom of any prod window so it just stands out to prevent having an accident. So in the SQL Server Management Studio Query Editor window, when you look at the bottom, the default is yellow and it gives you the number of rows returned, zero or whatever, and the time, execution time of the query. But the key point is it's just kind of a light yellow, always, regardless of environment, if you don't change it. So we want to change it. So to do that, when you first log into SQL Server, a, a given connection, a given server, and you're authenticating, one time, the first time on a given server, Click the Options button. That'll change the dialog box and bring up a tab with some more details. Check the Use Custom Color box. Click the Select button. A dialog will pop up. You can pick a color. Pick red. Click OK on the dialog. And then at this Connect to Server, off screen here, it's that's a Connect button. I clipped it off. Go ahead and click that Connect button. You'll close it, and voila, you're done. For that production server, every time you open it from now on, It'll be red like this. All other environments will just be the default light yellow. But when you see this red at the bottom of the screen and you're using Management Studio, you'll know, oh, I'm in prod. Be extra careful. So it's a nice feature to have set up for all your prod servers. Next, we're going to look at setting up line numbers in your query editor sheet. So to turn on the line numbers, we go to Tools, Options, we go to the text editor here, and then we go down to all languages. And underneath all languages, there's line numbers. Before I check it, plain text, unchecked, transact SQL, line numbers unchecked, XML. So all these different languages and display options all have line numbers unchecked. I'm just going to go to all, line, all languages and check line numbers, and voila, they're all checked. And just like that, the line numbers are present in the query execution window. The green blinking box shows you what they look like. You'll find these line numbers very useful during code reviews when two parties are talking back and forth because you can quickly isolate that say line 1914 has issue X and why not try approach Z? You'll also find the line numbers useful on larger scripts as a quick navigation age aid to page up or down throughout the code quickly. Next up, we're going to simplify the tab names on the query editor sheet. The default has them pretty cluttered and long, and by simplifying them, you can shorten them down and get more on screen. So here we are in the query editor window. With the defaults, it's just too busy. There's a file name, I've blurred out the server name and username for security reasons, and then there's a SPID, a session ID. That's a lot of information, and usually you don't need all of that unless you're doing multiple servers, but I typically open up a second instance of SSMS, one pointing to server A and a different one pointing to server B. Personal preference, but then I really don't need the server name, and I'm the user, so I don't need that either. And so I like to get rid of those. And that is what we're going to do. So to change that, you go to Tools, Options, the Text Editor, and then the Edit tab and Status Bar. And then there's four settings down here. One, include file name. We want to leave to true. But the other three settings in green, the include database name, I don't need that. Login name, don't need that. Server name, don't need that. 
So double click all those to flip them to false and then click OK. But it won't quite work yet. You need to restart SSMS. And when you do, the change will take effect. And look at that. Look at how nice and compact that is. Just a query name. They aren't actually files. I just uh, went new query, new query, new query, and it popped up three new queries. And it's nice and compact. Before I could only get three up here. Now I could get at least six, maybe seven. So it's a really nice change to do once and just have your SSMS set up that way. Looks far better. Next up, we're going to discuss uh, the query editor sheet and using spaces and never tabs, replacing tabs with spaces, and we'll discuss the reasons why. So the situation is that the default SSMS tab settings are to use tabs and not spaces. So let me demonstrate a problem with that. Uh, let's write up some quick SQL. One, two, three, four spaces. Select star. I'm going to hit enter from nowhere where some field equals some value. Okay, so I have my SQL query and I wanted to indent it for whatever reason. If I copy that and for demonstration purposes open it in Notepad++ so you can really see what's going on. The first four spaces were recorded as spaces. When I hit enter the system put in a tab and then a tab. So I have spaces and tabs. It all looks lined up properly here in SSMS but that's where the problem is. That's where the rub is. Understand that this is almost certainly going to make jagged indents between the tabs and the spaces when you check this code into a source control system where a tab might be two instead of four spaces or it might be five instead of four or maybe you have your set to two and it just when you look at or when you look at different systems it's going to come out with a jagged edge. Uh, and not just source control on different files. You save it as a file and you open up Notepad instead of Notepad++ or you open it up in some other editor. And so it's always a problem. So I prefer saving everything as spaces and then it'll always be consistent wherever you're looking it up. So to fix that, get rid of all this, zero it out, go back to Query Analyzer. So back in here to fix it, we're going to go to Tools, Options, and text editor, all languages, go to the tabs down here, and the default is four, you could leave it, I prefer two, so I'm going to hit two, and the important part is to insert spaces, not keep tabs. Hit OK on that, and now if we were to redo this, space space, select star, Hit enter from the where, where, I don't know, some field equals A. Now if we go copy that, oops, go into notepad and they're all spaces. So that's a nice trick to do. Again, it's a one-time configuration, set it up and you're done. You don't have to change it ever again. And the final configuration tip for this 10 minute trainer is to set the deadlock priority to low. And we'll discuss why that's important to do. And this setting again is a one time setup. You do it once and you're done forever. We're going to go into Tools, Options, Query Execution, SQL Server, and Advanced. And there's a bunch of settings in here, but what we want to look at is set deadlock priority. We don't want it defaulted to normal, we want it defaulted to low. And the reason why is to make sure your queries always lose in the event of a deadlock. Anything you're running in Management Studio is just not going to be as important as some automated process that's running. And if you happen to accidentally write a query that deadlocks something, you have a transaction or whatever, you're going to want your query to lose, especially if you're doing anything on prod or anything in a higher environment stage or whatever. So just set the deadlock priority to low and it reduces the risk of you breaking something. And click OK when you're done to save it. And with that, wrap up the video. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please click like and be sure to comment and subscribe below.